Hey, what's up guys? Pat O'Neill here and today I'm going to do a video on how I approach deck building. This video is going to specifically focus on the leader Fuse Zamasu from Union Force. Uh, this is basically because Richard Zat made a really excellent deck building video called Toa 101 where he explained to you his philosophy on how he builds decks uh, and how he arrives at his Toa list. I figured I want to do something very similar with Zamasu largely because I'm not Richard Zapp. I'm completely different than he is. I'm not the same person who would have guessed, but yeah. Uh, so he builds decks differently than I do, just as you guys build decks differently than I do, and so on and so forth. Everybody builds decks differently. So I kind of want to give you guys like my overview of how I do things, and you know, hopefully there's something that you can take away from it and something that will help you guys uh, you know, build you know, better decks, or at least more fun decks in the future. Um, so yeah. Before we jump into actually talking about Zamasu and all he entails, I want to do like a general overview real fast about uh, you know the differences in deck building philosophy. There's usually two ways to build a deck. Uh, there is a top-down philosophy, which is what if your goal is to win a tournament or you know to play the most competitive deck possible. I highly recommend this most of the time. It's basically you pick the best win con or what you perceive to be the best card in the format or the best strategy and you basically just build around that card and surround it with the best cards possible so you guys have maybe heard me say like just play good cards a lot so if you're just playing what you think are the best cards with the best synergy uh, and you just play well with that strategy you are you know bound to come up with like a ton of success for any tournament that you go to <clears throat> the other philosophy is a bottom up where you choose either a specific card because you find it cool or interesting and then but or more specifically a leader you kind of just want to build say Zamasu or Goku Black and say hey this is the leader I want to play what's the best deck I can play with it as opposed to saying like hey I think that you know Victory Strike here Son Goku the Awakened Power is the best strategy in the format I want to surround everything around it so the first thing you have to ask yourself, at least from the bottom up perspective, I mean, you can do it as well for the top down, and I highly recommend that you do, no matter which route you decide to go with, is you want to ask yourself, hold on, Shenron's layer is not cooperating with me, is uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the specific either leader or win con that you've chosen? Like, what are its strengths and weaknesses? So, for the purposes of Zamasu for this video, the strength of the card is that it has, as a leader, more life than the standard card. A bear, you know, standard leader. Most leaders have eight life. Uh, I would say almost all of them do. Zamasu, based on how he works, usually ends up with anywhere between 11 and 14 life. So, that is basically his biggest pro. In addition to any, you know, leader-specific cards. So that's his his biggest pro. His biggest cons are on the front side. We notice he doesn't draw. So he inherently has less card advantage than other leaders. Additionally, he awakens at two or less life, which means that he goes longer on his front side than most leaders do in this game. And since it doesn't, it, it ties in with the first point. Since he does not draw on the front side, he actually has a very weak early game because he just has no inherent card advantage. Uh, and he has, you know, just, he just, he's on the front side for way, way, way longer. Uh, then you look at his exclusives, which we'll, we'll talk more about in a second, and you see that none of them are really early game oriented. They're all very late game oriented. So as far as exclusives, that would force you to want to play or would make you choose to play Zamasu. Um, none of them really help out his early game, which is where he's on the front side most of the time. So this leader is very prone to hand destruction strategies and is very prone to to aggressive base strategies so that you should make a note of that and we will basically you know figure out how to shore that up later on in the video but those are basically our disadvantages as a leader and in any build that we are going to play if we expect hand destruction and or aggressive uh, decks to be a thing we're going to need to shore that up as well as give us some early game card advantage so that that way we can at least move through our deck and try to execute our strategy with you know some form of regularity um, and now you have to ask yourself at this point the rules of engagement of the format so right now in the set six format the dominant decks are 
basically if we can you can sort all these leaders by popularity so Janimba is the most popular for Shenron's Lair uh, on the Shenron's Lair website Janimba is the most popular for blue so mill is the strategy that's probably being played as you can see 2.66% of all decks right now are Janimba Chilai and Limo and Broly uh, Chilai and Limo is most likely a height of mastery variant which is so it's a victory strike deck and then Broly is an aggressive deck. So right away, we, we know right here. So Broly is 2.27% of decks that are being built right now. And he's the second most popular green leader. So if anybody's going to be playing green in an event, we know that aggro is most likely going to be it, which is something we're weak to. So we have to keep that in mind. And then you have Son Goku here, uh, Skillless. He is somebody that is, you know, has a multitude of strategies, a very good mid-range strategy, but... The thing is he can play up or down to somebody so he can play aggressive against us or he can play a control game against us and since we're weak to control we are you know susceptible to this card broly is very similar this is a deck that can go up or down so you know that's just like i said with kid goku pan not really seeing as much i mean it looks like 2.46 so i guess pan is expected as a deck to be played uh, largely because of the boost from the anniversary box so you know, it's definitely more popular than I originally thought it would be. But like you could just see looking at this, so we have one slow deck, you know, we have one aggro deck in Broly, uh, we have a control deck with Chilai, uh, we have a mid range, and then Broly is also, I guess, it can be either aggro or control, so it's kind of also like a mid range strategy. So, I, like roughly a third, like 40% of the field, uh, seems like it is in a pretty good spot uh, against us in the early game, but if we can shore that up, uh, later on, in, like I said in the video, then we will have some success against those more aggressive based strategies. Um, and it looks pretty good though for the most part because uh, a deck like Lord Slug is down here, 0.77%. This is a deck that like destroys us. I and mean, Super 17 is also pretty good against us, but based on the percentages that we're seeing, uh, it's basically you know only half as likely for us to see a Super 17 player as we are a Chi Lai player to sit down for a turn. So for the most part, if we can focus on shoring up our aggro matchup, Zamasu just seems like it slots in reasonably well in the format. And if we think it's, you know, well positioned, like say none of the stuff that's popular is good against it, then you would know that this is something you should probably try to pursue and bring to a tournament. So that's kind of how I go about deck selection. Uh, so now let us start jumping into the nuts and bolts of why you guys are probably here. So let's choose Zamasu as a leader. So why are we choosing Zamasu? Like I said, because he has more life, so if we expect an aggressive format, he's pretty good against them if we can shore up those, those weak points like we talked about. Um, also, he just got a lot of support in the anniversary box. So let's take a look at those cards and see what they would force us into that wasn't previously available. Because Zamasu has been around since set 2, um, and basically the only previous tested or proven strategy with him was on with uh, Fu Shotted and Mystery. And Goku Black uh, Rosé, trying to just kill our opponent in one uh, one turn on turn five, uh, via a very risky, a very high risk combo. Um, so, between uh, set four, set five, and set six, Zamasu didn't really get anything that made you want to choose him as a leader compared to other uh, leaders. But with the anniversary box, he received quite a lot of goodies. So, he received this Goku Black, which is a free body which is always nice because uh, if your leader is Zamasu you get to draw a card and you get a free body you know not super great but pretty nice he got fusion refined which is a four drop uh, that allows us to awaken so this is a, a, a reason to choose Zamasu right away is it shores up one of his previous weaknesses which is he was very susceptible to triple strike which is a, a weakness I probably should have covered he's really just susceptible to triple, triple strike if you get um, if somebody hits you with triple strike when you're at three life uh, you can very easily lose the game, and that's why um, Zamasu has struggled a little bit in the past, was when Triple Strike was really popular in Set 3 and Set 4 with things like Triple Flash and whatnot. Um, there would be this really awkward dance where you'd be stuck at 4 and you'd have to defend your life tooth and nail to stay at 4 so that you just didn't die to something like Triple Flash. So this gets around that weakness, so that's like a, a small you know, bonus, something that helps us out. But the real kicker here is the 2 blue. Uh, if your leader card is Zamasu and you have 15 or less cards in your deck, you get to play Infinite Force Fuse Zamasu in, uh, in hand, or from your hand and play it. So if we take a quick look at that card, uh, this is a 10 drop, 
Uh, and previously, your best case scenario was playing it for seven. Uh, and now it's six, because we go back to Fusion Refine. He's four to cast, and then two to actually play the card from your hand. So uh, six cost means realistically this card is going to come out a turn earlier than it used to. Uh, indestructible means that unless your opponent is on like a very red heavy minus strategy, or happens to have God Strike Pierce in their you know deck at some point, this card is going to stay around and it's going to grind the game out for us, which is really good because um, you know. Zamasu already inherently because of his weaknesses and the color that he is in wants to play a very defense heavy game uh, and just play a game of resources where he's just going to try and grind you out with the 10 drop and you have to ask yourself is this this infinite force fuse Zamasu good enough to be used as your win con over any of the previous existing win cons such as Gogeta Hero Revived or Ultra Instinct Son Goku well first off the card like I said is arguably the most difficult battle card to remove from the board so you know that once this card goes down it's very difficult for your opponent to get it off the board which is a huge plus uh, for ending the game and then when you read the auto it has inevitability on it um, it just strips your opponent of resources it has removal it's a really solid clock and it pairs really well with what blue usually is doing which is playing cards like sensi bean uh, and dimension magic and trying to stall out the game so yes I would say that this card is, you know, a valid win con. And honestly, looking at the other blue-based, you know, win cons, it's probably the best one that we can play for this specific leader. You could play Gogeta here or Revived, but this card, just in terms of raw power of the cards, Gogeta here Revived is really good. Yes, it does set your opponent at three life, but it does carry uh, some risk, uh, more so, so than Infinite Force Fuse Zamasu, and it's much more difficult. I feel like to win uh, the game from behind with Gogeta Hero Revived than to win a game from behind with Infinite Force Fuse Zamasu. Um, and then the last card that we received here is Plan for Destruction, which is a pump spell that will give us extra energy if there happens to be seven or more energy between each, uh, uh, each player, which is fantastic because this card is basically a one cost objection once you get past the uh, the middle of the game and it lends itself really really well with this strategy of trying to play infinite force fuse samasu um basically we'll, we'll be it helps ramp us this card is expensive that card will help us ramp as long as we're samasu so looking at the new support it basically lends itself to trying to play the 10 drop it, it's spelled out very clear that the 10 drop is what it's intended to be used for you don't necessarily have to use it but for the purposes of testing the new cards and figuring out how good they are, we are going to slot in four of our win con that we've determined is the best way to end the game using this leader within the parameters that we have set. And then we are going to choose four of each of the new cards so that that way we may try them out and just see how good they are. We're basically just trying to build a skeleton of a deck and then we're going to start testing it and you know figuring out how it works. And as we start building the deck, you'll even see like We'll hit some roadblocks along the way. So here we go. We have, where is it? View. We have 16 cards. So we have four of each of the new cards and the card that the, the this Fusion Refine goes into. So we need a way to really quickly get to uh, get planned to destruction online. So that's the first thing to note. So we need to find a way how fast, like the fat, what is the fastest way we can play plan? So that's number one. Number two. This Goku Black is free, and it draws us a card, which means it's worth trying to play it. More importantly, when we look at Fusion Refined, his whole goal is to play this card, Fuse Zamasu, Infinite Force, uh, Fuse Zamasu. This card has Patara, and we need a Goku Black for an additional way to play this. So this, this Goku Black serves as redundancy. It's basically an, another way for us to be able to get this card into play, because if we can't fulfill... The primary way to play this card off uh, its effect, which is having 15 or less cards in your deck, then we will need some form of redundancy if we don't draw it. And Goku Black works out really well for two reasons. One, he satisfies the Union Patara requirement. And two, he can find us a way for us to get 15 or less cards in our deck. So the things that we need to address from here are we need a way to get into plan quickly, and we need a way to trigger Fusion Refine quickly. So let's go back to building the deck. So, turn one, I can't think of a card that gets us to uh, plan for destruction faster. But turn two, it has objection. 
and we're gonna just max it again at four four basically means I always want to see it just because right now we're just building a skeleton I just want to build as pure as possible so I can get a, a very linear game plan and figure out exactly how everything is going to end up playing out and once I've got it where I want I can start peeling it back and start adding more cards to shore up the matchup so right now objection is the best way to do it there is another card that we can use hold on let me set the filter to blue there's another card that we can play here Majin Defier West Supreme Kai. This is another ramp spell at two. Now we could play four Majin Defiers and four objections here. However, plan specifically says it has to be energy. And yes, I know that uh, you know this technically does provide an energy, but it doesn't count towards your energy total. So therefore, this does not help us in any way, you know, go for plan for destruction. Oop. Oop, oop, oop. Yeah, there we go. Alright. So there you go. Sorry for the little technical difficulty. So that does not. So you know that's basically how we're going to get to plant. So right now, there's no other cards that I can think of that will ramp us in the entire game. So our game plan right now is turn one, do something. We haven't established what that is yet. Turn two, objection. Turn three, plan is live. So now we have to ask ourselves: turn three, is it better to just play? I don't know. Say this nightmare scythe, Goku Black. It's a Goku Black, so it helps us for the the purposes of fusion, uh, infinite force fuse Zamasu, but and it is a specific Zamasu card, right? But it doesn't help us get to our primary win con. Like this, like w w casting this on three, doesn't help us get to infinite force faster because we would still have to have a Zamasu somewhere, right? So like fusion refined is going to be our Zamasu that gets us either this infinite force or lets us Patara over another turn. So it, honestly, it would just be better to play Fusion Refined on four, uh, turn three with four energy, as opposed to casting something like this. Uh, or ideally, if you want to leave both plays live, where you either go Fusion Refined or have the Patara, the best thing to do on turn three would be to play Plan for Destruction, right? Because Plan for Destruction is going to get us to seven, eight energy, and let us just play the big things much easier. So we can safely assume that our third turn is just dedicated to Plan for Destruction. We don't really need to add a card like Nightmare Scythe because it does, it's not going to like help us bring out this this 10 drop. Yes, like again, you could Patara, but if we played Nightmare Scythe on 3 and then we played Fusion Refined on 4, because remember, Zamasu's not an untap leader. He's a draw 2 leader when he awakens. So if we do Nightmare Scythe on 3, Fusion Refined on 4, we're not bringing out Infinite Force Fuse Zamasu until turn 5. That's that's not good enough. That's a little bit too slow because the rules of engagement right now are you have to do something at least pretty strong on turn four. Even Shenron Gogeta, which many people will consider like a tier two, tier three deck right now, has presents some kind of you know amazing game plan by turn four with Sh uh, with Gogeta Hero Revive. So we just we have to have something that is better than just passively playing a card like Nightmare Sight. So. Next up, we need to think about the other part that we're talking about with Fusion Refined. We need to find a way to satisfy this condition of having 15 or less cards in our deck. We could just sit there and just try and awaken as fast as possible by critting our life, awakening early, and just praying our opponent attacks us, but that proposes, you know, two problems. One, it makes it super risky. Our entire strategy is super risky. Like, we could just uh, lose the game, like, immediately. Our opponent could just come out of nowhere and just hit it with a bunch of a bunch of haymakers they're on an aggro deck they know that we're weak to aggro they're going to play aggressively you don't want to put your, yourself uh, in that position where you're just going to die out of nowhere uh, and two if your opponent knows this is your strategy they don't have to necessarily swing at you um, and then they, until they can just develop their strategy faster than you and just win on the you know basically outright they can play their height of mastery they can play their big green broly or anything like that so we don't want to be relying on it. So we need a card that does that. I know from past experience playing Zamasu that Joyful Strike Goku Black Rose is a card that will, you know, get us to awaken quickly uh, if we need it. But more importantly, when we awaken, this card will put lots of cards into our drop area and get our deck very small very quickly. So we can start with a baseline with this card just to see how good it is. So right now we are looking at this is our deck right here. So now we need to start thinking about other things. Like because right now we basically have our game plan. Turn one, do something. Turn two, objection. 
turn three plan for destruction and now we should be at six energy at this point and that lets us play joyful strike on turn four it'll get us awakened if we need it if we're already awakened great we can just play it put a bunch of cards in the drop play fusion refined for four and with our last two energy we can play uh we can play the infinite force from our hand and there we go we've established that turn four we can play a really powerful you know bombastic play something that that presents our opponent with something that will clock them you put them on a clock as in they're going to lose in x number of turns uh and just grind out the game from there because Zamasu, even though zamasu doesn't win the game immediately he locks your opponent at a finite number of resources and turns and they can't really go above the turn marker that they are on when you play them. So, like, if they're at three energy, they're stuck at three energy for the rest of the game. So they have to find a way now to win the game right away. So this is basically our, our core playable stuff. Now we just need to start thinking about things that will shore up our matchup and figure out where to go from there. So we need a turn one play right now, right? And we need something that gives us some card advantage. So let us just assume that... We have all these options for turn one. So we could play Gawasu. So Gawasu actually finds us a lot of pieces. That's pretty good. Borgos is also a really popular one because it, it prevents our opponent from untapping if they're also blue, which is another popular one. Uh, and then we have Awakening Talent Pan, which you know will provide some aggression early on. And it's reusable, and it's pretty good. Uh, and it also gives us a little bit of card draw and move us closer. Now. Which one you choose is basically personal preference, but the way I want to play the game, personally, I want to play a very controlly, grindy game. Again, my leader is really weak to aggro early on, doesn't have a lot of card advantage, and a lot of people can bully me early on. So I don't really want to give my opponent any more card advantage than they already are getting on the front side. So the way I think I want to choose to play the leader is to not really attack. I don't really want to be attacking with my leader because if we get into a battle of trading blows, they have way more cards than me. It's much better, I think, for me to just sit back and be passive uh, and let them give me cards by attacking because I know that my 10 drop is better you know, in terms of card quality than most of the, the end game bombs in the game. So I'm okay if they want to play the long grindy game. That's my game plan. I want them to try and feel rushed. So to that end, I don't think I really want Awakening Talent Pan because it doesn't lend to my strategy. It doesn't. It gives them cards, right? And I don't want to be swinging at my leader, and I don't really want to be activating my leader skill either, right? I don't really want to be doing that because I want to try and just conserve my life as much as possible and safely get to my turn four bomb and then protect my life while the 10 drop just wins the game for me by default. That's basically the, the established plan that I am on right now. So for that reason, uh, it's one of these. So we'll just take Gowasu, because so far everything in our deck is a god. And that's like the best turn one play I can think of right now, without really you know debating about shoring up matchups or anything like, anything like that. So let's talk about other cards that we could be playing. Sensu Bean is really good for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, it's really good defensively. And two, it lets us extend plays if we want to. So you know, And it's just a generically good card. Uh, and I, I know from previous experience it's proven itself time and time again, uh, especially against the aggressive based strategies. So this is a card that will just, you know, it's just generically good and will help us shore up uh, our aggro matchup. Same thing with Dimension Magic, it's just the best blue negate, and we need something that will, you know, help us out. So right now we're at 36 cards, uh, and we just start thinking about other things. Like we basically have, uh, you know, we have our, our like core package, like this is it. 36 cards like this is 4x of everything that we we you know want to play to do the bare bones skeletons and now you can kind of just like start thinking about what is my plan b right like what am i going to be doing if i had to you know if, if like push came to shove how else am i winning the game so start thinking about it uh we need what if we what, what if we just don't hit an infinite force right well, we could call with a previously established win con. Like, we could say, like, what's our backup plan? What if we just go Joyful Strike, right? We could just jam, say, Foo Shrouded and Mystery here as, like, a plan B. Um, actually, before I jump into this, we should probably do Super Combo, should we not? So, yeah. I personally prefer Hellas of the ones that we can use. North Kai and Great Saiyan are basically your other two options. I don't think Great Saiyan is the right pick. Because we don't get a lot of cards in our drop area. Uh, 
playing the style that I have chosen to play. I'm not putting cards into my drop via leader skill because I'm trying to, again, stall out the game. So the sparking the gate doesn't really help me until later on. It basically comes down to personal preference, which is North Kai, which is better early on in the game. And it's blue if you, like, in an emergency, how to use the leader skill. This is better, but I have chosen to go with Hellas because I believe in most situations it is the superior super combo because it lets me see more cards. It also lets me pitch cards like Objection and Plan when they are no longer relevant. So I think it, it lends ourselves pretty well to the strategy. So we are at 41 cards right now, and we have a Plan B and a Skeleton. So let's say we're you know, paranoid that we just don't have enough in the gates. We could go in here and just jam four Weiss's Coercion. And I don't know, maybe we, we really want to lean into the Foo strategy here. Black, and we go to Foo Shadow Mystery. We still have four cards. Again, we're just trying to do, be as pure as possible here and figure out exactly where, where things went wrong or you know where they might go right. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure out like just a random card that we can throw in here. Let's say uh, we were expecting that we're just going to have like a bunch of bombs and we go like say, let's actually cut Foo down one, we'll go two hero revived and we'll just jam a Vegeta in here. So that way we can go and do hero revived, it's like a plan B. Where is Deadly Defender? Actually, we could go Penitent Martyr. Penitent Martyr would help us shore up the aggro matchup as it's some way to get some kind of way, uh, get the like board clear, and then also Deadly Defender. So, right now, like this is like our baseline deck, right? Our like super pure deck. We've come up with it, and now we can test hand it and start to figure out. Oh, come on, Shenron's is like glitching out on me here. So this is like our like super pure deck right now, right? Super duper pure. Uh, obviously, like the Fu, the Gogetas, and the, the Deadly Defenders are just things I want to try. I don't know. Just try it out. Just for the hell of it. Like these could be just anything, but you see, like the, the core of our deck is just all force right now. So, like now you test it, right? And you find out that you just don't have maybe, say, enough one drop plays. You need more one drops to kind of like, you know, keep going. Maybe your plans don't work. But like what happens if you get a bad hand? Like let's say you go like turn to objection, but you don't hit plan. Or like you just don't hit objection, but you do hit plan. So your turn four, you're not on six energy, you say you're on five energy now, right? And then you have then you basically you can't execute your plan on turn four. You can't execute joyful strike. Additionally, with like Fu and Gogeta here revived, and then maybe like Infinite Force and Goku Blacks, you find you have like too many ten drops. And you also find, like, say you don't need Goku Black as much as possible. So we can start to make adjustments from here and figure out what what, uh, what needs to happen. We also still don't have, like, any super great way to stave off aggro aside from, like, Deadly Defender in the early game. And again, we'd rather have our energy for plan or just multiple plans on turn three. So we might consider cutting that. So, again, Fu is very similar. We might not want Fu because, again, like, let's say... We we could theoretically with Sensu Bean play Fusion Refined on turn four, if we even if we don't hit uh, Plan at five energy. But we we since Joyful Strike is our enabler, we really can't get where we need to be. Fortunately for us, when looking at the card pool, there is another Zamasu that we have not considered, which is Undying Link. Undying Link shores up a couple problems for us. One, if we get a bad hand, we can still go off on five energy instead of six. Uh, through the aid of Sensu Bean. Uh, it's very similar to Goku Black uh, in terms of effect. It's just obviously not as potent. And it also cuts down on our 10k count, which is super good because uh, as of right now, the way we are thinking about playing the deck, we are looking to tap out right away on turn 4. That's not necessarily always correct, but that is something we can do. So let us remove all those other cards that we were just talking about. We don't need... Let's say you find Gogeta Hero Revived is not a good win con. We add Undying Link. So now, our deck looks something like this. Again, super pure, 4x everything. And again, we need more 1-drops. And we still haven't shored up the aggro problem. So what if, for the purposes of not only having a turn 1 play, but shoring up our aggro matchup, 
we decide to play Supreme Kai. Time just dropped there. So now we're at 48. So now we have lots of turn one plays. And we still have objection. Uh, and we also have our like our standard way of playing this. And we still have uh, Undying Link here. So Undying Link is basically replacing our Goku Black for if we get a bad hand. And then also keeping everything kind of like lower to the ground. Uh, what happens if you don't see un enough un Undying Links? Because like, this is a problem you'll find out from playtesting. I know from experience. You need two Undying Links to go off in the same way that you needed two Goku Blacks, right? So what are the odds with your low amount of draw power that you're going to have that? Like you'll have a bunch of one drops, which will help things out tremendously. But to go off, you're really ne you really need Undying Link two times plus Fusion Refined. Anywhere where we can add redundancy in the deck would help out tremendously. And this is where we started to make this change. Where is Goku Black? We decided we could do him at three because we can only play one of him in a turn. So he's not going to help us like filter a ton. So adding redundancy to the deck, we can add these Sun Goku Path to the Infinites from the box because they lend themselves really well to this Undying Link strategy. So now, instead of needing two Undying Links or two Goku Blacks to go off, we only really need uh, one Undying Link and one Sun Goku Path to the Infinite to go off, as opposed to just needing two of the same card that we only play four. So now, we have, since Undying Link and Goku are basically like a mini combo where I can play Undying to Awaken, uh, and then once I'm Awakened, I can play Goku for, free, for basically an almost free body, and then I can play Undying Link again for free to get us to the 15 while still having, you know, not really spent any real energy. And that lets me, lets me go Fusion Refine. And with the Sensu Bean, I could basically then start, play, uh, you know, going right into Infinite Force right on time, even at 5 energy. So that is basically where we want to be, I would think, uh, for pretty much the, the, the purposes of this combo. We could max out Goku here, but right now we're at 50. So let us see where we are at for the deck. Killing me, Shenrons. <laughs> so this is where we're at in the deck. So you can start to see the deck is starting to take take hold a little bit more because now we have, you know, some more redundancy in the deck and it's it's working out a little bit better. We have a bunch of turn one plays here. Uh, in fact, I would argue we'd have too many turn one plays here, uh, and Supreme Kai really shores up our uh, ability to stave off anti-aggro because of her counter play so she's perfect for this deck she does everything we want she gives us a turn one play she digs uh, and tries to find us the cards we need and she keeps people off of our back for the first two turns uh, so just stand like just amazing now, her only downside is that she is a black card Goasu also helps us find lots of pieces and if you like him that's fine but I personally I'm looking to try and add more anti-aggression that is not in the form of negates because we have eight negates right now, which is quite a lot. Uh, I feel like it's too much. Like we actually just don't have a lot of combo power. So if I could, you know, change these to be something else, uh, specifically something that has combo power, that would be great. Speaking of combo power, uh, yes, we just uh, we just uh, cut some 10ks, but you'll notice that there's a distinct lack of something in our deck that other decks do not have, and that's double strike. We don't have reach. Right now we have this 10 drop and it will grind us the game down, but sometimes you need to close the game faster. So just looking at this deck, I realized from just playing maybe you know, against Janimba or whatnot, like, hey, I'm getting the, my opponent to one or two life really often. And if I just had Champa in the deck, it would make things a lot better. And since we're super defensive to the point where like we're just, you know, we just don't, we can't close out games. We're like actually too defensive heavy. We can consider cutting to Weiss's Coercion to try to add two Champas to the deck. Uh, and then also on top of that, uh, we might consider changing Gawasu because again, if we want to do more of the anti-aggro package, there are other cards that we can still consider that we have not. So, and this is basically all personal preference at this point. This is all where the testing comes in. Like we have our skeleton, right? And it's performing well, but it's not quite there yet. You have to start thinking about the people you play against or you expect to play against often, what is good against them and does it synergistically work with your deck so like, let's say you are playing against a bunch of aggro decks uh, and you are in blue, so the first thing your your eyes are drawn to is Sun Goku striving to be the best 
but it doesn't really synergize whatsoever with your strategy against aggro because turn two is your objection turn. You're you don't want to sacrifice your way to win the game or threaten lethal by playing this on turn two. You could play it on turn three, but for one energy, Supreme Kai of Time Time Disruptor does the same thing. Uh, but we still do need more ways to punish our opponent for uh, you know trying to lean hard into what we're weak against. So let me see where is Gawasi. Classic. So my recommendation would be to try out Kami. Again, the way I've chosen to play the deck is I'm not trying to cut my life down, right? I've chosen not to cut my life down whatsoever. Because I do not want to... Uh, like, I'm basically just trying to play the defense game. Uh, so therefore, him being black doesn't really affect me. But if you've chosen to play a more aggressive... Uh, style where you're trying to get a, be a bigger, beefier hand earlier than the way I am trying to play it. By all means, consider keeping Gawasu or keeping Borgos if you think the untap is fine. But for me, I like Kami because Kami slots in really well with our strategy. So turn one, he's a another cantrip that we can use to find cards just like Supreme Kai. Uh, you know, If we just need to find those cards earlier. Uh, and two, he slots in even on turn three. Uh, or turn uh, two really well. So we can play him at the tail end of turn two with objection to pro uh, basically stave off our opponent from going too wide against us, too aggressive against us, because they know that they'll get punished by Kami on the crackback. And it'll still let us implement our game plan. We'll still have two energy left for plan for destruction if we need it on turn three. So he doesn't really interfere with our game plan any at any point in turns one, two, or three. He is relevant in all those, and he helps you know fuel the two biggest needs that our deck has, which is we have really bad frontside card advantage. Uh, he gives us a 5k combo on board to protect our life, and then also he punishes the one thing that we're super weak to. So he's just perfect pretty much in this deck. And then next up, like I said, we want to add Champa because Champa just gives us some reach. So now our skeleton is just starting to look like this. And honestly, this like for a baseline deck, this looks pretty good. This is a pretty good shell. In fact, this is pretty much, aside from the two Weeses, which I have to cut real fast, this is almost the shell that I have arrived at before. You could, if you don't really like the Weeses and we want more of a plan B, because you'll notice the plan B is what we don't have right now, aside from just jamming a bunch of four drops. So let's say like you wanted to cut two Weeses and then add something that is a pretty good win con. So for example, let's say you wanted UI Goku. Whoop, I accidentally clicked the card. What did I add? No, we don't waste, we stretch the gods. Or you wanted Spirit Bomb Goku. Now, when we look at the deck, it looks like we have a pretty solid game plan. So now, our turn one plays, we have six one drops that will draw us cards. All th six of these cards also punish our opponent for trying to go too wide or do something super aggressive. Objection is our clear turn one play. Sensu Bean, Weiss's Coercion, and D Dimension Magic give us a really strong 10 card core to protect our life total. And in the case of Sensu Bean, it lets us extend plays. 10 drop Zamasu is our mandatory win con that we've, when, when, uh, we've decided to build around. Uh, normally we might consider three, but by the nature of this deck milling, uh, we need to see this card. It can't, we can't afford to have it just randomly get milled or get crit off our life if we are in a desperate situation where we need to take life to awaken, such as in the Victory Strike matchup, where we need to awaken as fast as possible to see as many cards as possible. We have to have every one of these uh, that we possibly can. And this doubles for fused, uh, Fusion Refine. This card is really clunky, and I wish I could play three, but let's say from testing that we find out that, you know, again, in those matchups like Hide of Mastery where we need to like just quickly crit ourselves, uh, that this is not going to cut it. So this would basically be the core of what we're, we're, we're looking at right now. You just you can see from this shell, we have a pretty cohesive game plan. We play these ones, play objection on two. We got our defensive core for the mid game to help us out. And then turn three, we're playing a bunch of plan for destructions and just buying our time. And then turn four, we have basically our standard play of on, on double undying into infinite force. Or, if we hit three plans, we can go Undying Goku Black into Infinite Force. Or, since we added Goku for some redundancy, we can go into Zamasu, into Path of the Infinite, into Undying Link, into it. That will get us a 10 drop. Or, we can go 4 drop into 5 drop, into 4 drop, 
coupled with something like Champa or UI Goku or Spirit Bomb, again, it's preference, that'll give us a solid plan B. And our whole deck basically lends ourselves to this whole strategy. It's com like basically completely streamlined and it has some answers for everything. And now this is the part where this is probably where you'd want to leave it for your main board. And you'd probably want to start working on the sideboard to start shoring up matchups. Because as we, we were establishing before, if we go back to the deck builder real fast, we're bad against hand destruction. But if you look at the leaders that are here, Chile and Limo is 3.55% of the field in terms of what's being built right now for decks. And Super 17 is 1.6%, which you can see here at the bottom. So I'm twice as likely to run into a Chile player as I am here. And then same with Slug. Yes, we're really bad against hand destruction, but that's what your sideboard is for. You want to be, since you're more likely to see Chile and Limo, you should build your deck as if you're going against Chile and Limo more often than if you're coming against like Lord Slug, who's only 0.77%. And you should use your your sideboard to shore up that bad matchup. So if you were gonna, you know, you do your sideboard and you thought that hand destruction was a bad matchup, which it is, you should strongly be considering to add Mercenary Tau to your sideboard to help shore up your matchup. So that's basically like where you start to like you know fall in line. Let's say also you don't like uh, the Ultra Instinct and the Spirit Bomb, you could side those out for other things. Say you're against a Janimba player, you could really e you could very easily just take those cards out, and you could side in two Hero Revives. You're gonna get there, you know enough. Uh, and let's say like you just don't like the UI right as your your win con. You want something more consistent, uh, or something that's like very like you know just very explosive. Um, even if they have the negate, you could play something like Goku Oob here in this slot. Uh, or you could play, go back to playing Banisher Fu or Fu Shrouded in Mystery. You could play something like this as a shell. So this is your main board. And again, the, it, it, you know, it's no skin off your back what are those two Goku slots. They could be whatever you want them to be. It doesn't really affect our core game plan. Those like last like four to five, four to seven slots that you saw me tickering around with at the beginning. They don't really affect our core game plan. So, like, it, you can basically put whatever you want in there. If you're afraid of, you know, height of mastery and you really want to shore up that matchup, you could, you know, potentially, like, cut Kami and maybe take Kai down. And you could go triple Borgos. So that, that way, uh, did it add? Or is it glitching out? Yeah, you could add the, the Borgos here. And that way, they can't really untap. They can't really untap with height and with uh, with the Broly, so you could play it like this. So this gives you some some stabilization against aggro, and Burnish Bonds gives you some ability to punish the Broly player if they try to restand energy. So, and this also lends to that strategy where uh, you have less uh, non-blue cards, and it would help you out. Also, let's say you may not need. You may not need. Uh, I don't know. Say you don't really own Goku U or you don't want it. And you don't need uh, Fu the Dark Banisher because you feel that just rushing them with a bunch of 4-drops like Sun Goku Path to the Infinite or Undying Link with Champas is sufficient as a plan B. Uh, but what you're really terrified of is Cold Blood Lost for that matchup. If you're trying to prioritize that, you could just slot in two minus Killy Zones right here. And again, this is what it ends up looking like. Again, we never really change the core of the deck. The core of the deck doesn't change based on matchup. This, these two Killy Zones... Um, and these like these Borgoses and these Kai's and even like to a lesser extent the Champas, those are not like critical things to win the game. Like the Champa, one Champa might be critical, but the second one might not be critical. But like we have one, two, say one for the Champa, uh, and then like these three Borgo slots, like those are the things that you'd be want you'd want to to move around. Like I could play the same shell and cut the two Champas and the two minus Kili zones and bring in four Mercenary Tals. And that would be what I'd want to approach for the sideboard uh, for the matchup. But for the most part, your like 43 to 44 card main board doesn't really change. It's just the 5 or 6 in the, the board that changed to shore up whatever matchup you were terrified of against. But your main board should just be a generalist game plan like we did originally that, uh, that just tries to hedge its bets against what the expected field is. So again, looking at the leaders... For this again, the anniversary box, we see that 
1% of players are on this Sun Goku, which is a go wide strategy, which means that the Kami that we had in the board and not the minus Killy zone might be uh, better. Broly is very similar, actually. So now that you think about it, Broly's, uh, if you were going to be playing in singles, maybe the, a configuration like this with the two minus Killy zones in the board, main board, is how you'd want to approach it. If this is the most popular deck that's being built in the last 30 days and it's the one that is most prevalent from all the tournament results, then maybe this configuration is what you want to go with. Um, but me personally, especially since I the way I built my deck currently is for teams, because that's where I'm playing this deck, I have chosen to basically play it very similar to the original that you saw me put up there. So cut the three Borgos. We put Kai up. And we will do, say, one Dark Vanisher Foo, because it lends itself pretty well to our strategy of going uh, Undying Link into Path to the Infinite. And before we swing a Path to the Infinite or Undying again, we can play the second Undying and then go Dark Vanisher Foo and then swing at Leader and really put a ton of pressure on our opponent, especially with Further Destruction Champa. So that's a pretty solid you know, game plan, in my opinion. Uh, and then the last card was the Goku Oob. So, yeah. There you go. This is basically a generalist overview of what it ends up looking like. And this is probably how I would play the deck for a best of one format in a general format because minus Killy Zone is only really good uh, if you expect that everybody's on height of mastery, which works for singles, yes. But again, I built mine for teams, which is more like uh, you have you know less than uh, a u less than usual to run across the height of mastery player. So I built it as a generalist game plan. So there you go. This is basically the shell that I have arrived at. This is what I am actually probably going to play for a, the ARG Invitational in teams. And hopefully this is helpful to you guys in explaining, you know, how I build my core and how I kind of tweak things a little bit and get it to where I need to be. Uh, the simpler your deck can execute its game plan, the better. Um, and those last like four to six slots, like I said, that's where you add your spice, your tech. Uh, the things that like are, you know make it flexible or short matchups like this foo is like my choice uh, for spice like this is just another way to end the game that kind of comes out of nowhere that you know it's kind of bad bad for uh, to be on the receiving end of this same thing with Goku U. those are just like alternate ways to win the game that are not necessary for our usual game plan and if you don't need these to win the game like normal with the ten drop. There are other things you can do. You could play the striving, like I said. You could max out Kami if you find that you need more draw power, if you need more board wipes. That like that's where you implement it. But for the most part, that core, that like 44 card core, that's what you're you're focused on. So again, just keep testing, keep playing, uh, and building uh, to counter the matchups that you expect to come across. Hopefully, this has been informative and helps you guys kind of you know work on your own Zamasu lists. Uh, or, you know, building any other decks, say a Goku Black deck in the future. Hopefully, like I said, it helps you guys out a lot. So, there you go, guys. If you guys have any questions, as always, hit me up on YouTube or on Facebook or any number of things. Discord, the 3XG Discord channel. I'm always available. I'll always be willing to answer your questions. Again, thank you guys so much for everything, all the support that you guys give us here at 3XG. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.